Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at how Python implements selection. So we remember from the pseudocode that selection means giving the user a choice. And we look at two ways that Python does selection, the if statement and the case statement. It doesn't really implement a case statement but it implements something like a case statement. So the if statement, as we'll remember from pseudocode, it's a choice. In Python, how we state it is if some condition or conditions, colon, do some statements. Now, the important thing there is the statements are tabbed in. Else, in lowercase, with a colon, other statements, and they're tabbed in. And the statement that follows the if statement, as long as that is where the if and else are, that is that they are not tabbed in, Python will pick that up for you. But just for my sake, because I'll be the person reading your code, if you wouldn't mind doing the following. If you wouldn't mind saying if condition colon hash then statements else statements and then hash indif. So as we said before, hash are the comments or remarks. The compiler doesn't read them at all. But they're for somebody like me, the person who has to read your code and they'll help me understand where the if statement starts and finishes. So I see indif at the end of the if statement just so I can see because sometimes I miss the tabbing a little bit. Uh, I'm going to make this point a lot, I think, is that as well. When you're writing code as a programmer in the IT industry, and this was my experience in every company I worked for, rarely was I ever asked to write a program from scratch. Normally what I was asked to do was take somebody else's code and modify it. So if somebody else has written their code in a kind way that explains things clearly to me and gives me structures like this and has an end if, it makes it really easy for me to understand what's going on. If they had in common saying, well this is doing a sort or this is doing a search or this is declaring a structure, then it helps me understand what they're doing. Whereas if that information isn't there, it makes everybody's job more difficult. If everybody did this, then all programming companies, I think, would have an easier time. So we'll try and stick with the format of if condition, then statements, else statements, and if. So our, sim our simple if statement, if we're checking which is bigger, x or y, if x is e equal to 6 and x is assigned 6 using the equal sign, and y is 7 because y is being assigned 7 using the equal sign, then if x is bigger than y, colon, then print x is bigger, else print y is bigger, end if, and then end the program. So that's a, a simple if statement in Python. If we want to allow the user to input the values of x and y, Python has a, a function called input which allows the, which says get input from the screen. When I type, type in a value from the screen, Python will, will read it in as a string. So I need to convert that from a string to an integer. I do that by going int. So the int means if I type in the number 7, Python will read in 7 as the string or the character 7. I put int in brackets around the input to say change that 7 from a character to a number. So now x gets the value of the number 7, y gets the value of the number 6. If x is bigger than y, then print 7 is bigger than 6. Otherwise, if I put in, uh, let's say, 10 and 41, it'll print out that 41 is bigger than 10. So either way, it'll print out which is bigger. Um, if we wanted to add print statements in to allow the user to understand what's going on, we could say print, please input the first value, get that value assigned to x, then print, please input the second value and assign that value to y, and then do the check. In actuality, the input function is so neat, it allows us to do this in a, in a more compact fashion. So what we can do is just say, x gets the value of int, input, in brackets, please input the val first value, y gets the value, int, input. So if I put a string inside the input call, it prints that out on the screen. So what the user will see is, please input the first value, they'll type in 21, hit return, uh, it, then it'll print out, please input the second value. So as you can see, the code for that, it's very similar to the pseudocode. We'll remember that we have that percentage symbol, which is division remainder, which says what's left over when we divide. So if we type in the number 6 and we divide it by 2, 2 and 6 goes 3 times plus no remainder. If we type in the number 7 and divide by 2, it goes 3 times plus remainder 1. So, so if, what we say is if the value input gives, divided, divided by 2, if, it, if the remainder is not equal to 0, it's odd, 
If the remainder is equal to zero, it's even. And play around with that code and have a look at how it works. So our operators that we can use on on numerical values or on any kind of value, re variable values are exclamation mark equals means not equal to, equals equals mean is equal to, greater than and less than are as they are, and greater than or equal to and less than or equal to are as presented there, the equal sign being after the less than or greater than signs. We looked at the code for the biggest of three numbers and in Python it's exactly the same. Read the first value in, read the second, read the third. And if A is bigger than B, then if A is bigger than C as well, A is the biggest. Otherwise C is the biggest. And if A is not bigger than B, then if B is bigger than C, B is the biggest. Otherwise C is the biggest. I think the important thing to note here is the indentation again. And I want to keep hammering home that we see that the if A is bigger than B at the top is starts at the margin, the word then starts at the margin, then we push out if A is bigger than C by a tab, the then is underneath that, and then we push out the word print by another tab. So Python will not understand your code unless this tabbing is correct. So anything within the then statement or else statement is tabbed in. And in the overall picture, if A is bigger than C, the, the then part of that and the else part of that are tabbed in as well. So it's fiddly. Have a look at my code, play around with it and pull the tabs around a bit and you'll see that it'll do something totally different. So um, I, I cannot emphasize enough the importance I think of putting in these comments of then and end if and end and things like that to make the code clearer for you. Let's look at how Python implements the case statement. So Python doesn't uh, support what we would traditionally call a case statement or in some languages a switch statement, but it does have a special form of the else if call elf that allows you to merge the words else and if. So if we look at our code, for example, the biggest of three numbers, we see that the else part halfway down, there's an if there following it. So else if b greater than c. So it's right there. So we can merge that into a single statement as such as follows. And it's l if b is bigger than c then and notice how the indentation for the rest of the code is pulled back one because else and if has now merged into a single statement. So then the, our general form of the if else, else elif statement is um, if condition statements, elif condition statement, elif conditions, other statements, elif conditions, and then we have an else at the end to capture an unusual input. And again, I'd like it if we did it like this. If condition, then statements. Elif condition, then statements. Elif conditions, then statement. Else, and then end if. So we looked at this in pseudocode. Um, if we had a multi-choice question, and we, we knew that the correct answer was C, A, B, and D are wrong. How we do this in Python is program multi-choice question, get the user to input a value. If the value is A, then print wrong answer. L if it's B, print wrong answer. L if it's C, then print right answer. L if it's D, print wrong answer. Now we have to capture if they type in anything else as well. What if they type in E or F or G or 27 or hello, my name is Bob. So we want to capture those all by doing else print bad options. So what we're saying is if they type in something other than A, B, C, or D, it'll capture that and say that that's, that's not a valid option or something like that. Bad option is a bit terse, I think, and unkind. Perhaps we should say, I do not recognize what you have typed in. Please type in A, B, C, or D, something like that. If we want to calculate somebody's grade, uh, we type, let's say, what if I get a, a certain percentage value? If I get 71%, that means I get a first. If I get 62, that means I get a 2-1. If I get uh, 54, that's a 2-2. Two, two. So how I would do that in Python is I just read in the value. Then if the input value is greater than or equal to 70, it's a first. If it's greater than or equal to 60, it's 2-1. If it's greater than or equal to 50, it's 2-2. Two, two. If it's greater than or equal to 40, it's a pass. Uh, or a third, and if it's less than 40, it's a fail, unfortunately. So that's it for this episode. Thanks very much, and we'll see you on the next one.